I've just got a feeling in my bones it was an arsonist. Cloud, I don't care what you feel in your bones. Proof is what I care about. There's this girl who knows that and knows a lot more. Blackmail? Arson. Was she murdered? Clippers, if you're wrong about this and Chief Clifford finds out... <laughs> Switchboard. Flo? Oh, good evening, Miss Coughlin. Did the theater tickets arrive yet? A little while ago. Would you like me to send them up? Oh, yes. Uh, just give them to Mr. McLeod when he comes in. Right. Say, do you know four letters for albatross? Well, the apartment is ready. Notify my new tenant they can move in whenever they like. I'll call them first thing in the morning. What's six letters for amnesty? Pardon? You're a genius. P A R D O N. Flying up that heater duct through this vent here. I don't understand. Well, you don't have to. All you care is about the insurance money you'll get out of this dump, isn't it? Look, don't worry. It'll go clean and fast. The roof and top floors will go before the bottom. By the time the fire department even knows about it, goodbye, Charlie. favorite aunt. <laughs> what are you doing here? Well, I came to New York to beat out Joe Namath. No, I'm just passing through on my way to school. <laughs> Why didn't you call? Well, Mom told me not to, but uh, I decided to anyway. Well, I'm glad you did. You can stay over. Oh, just the words I wanted to hear. Now I can save that hotel money for the pair of cleats I need. <laughs> I'll take your football. You know, McLeod, when you come to think about it, your work in the file room must be incredible. 
Fascinating. Have you seen the All the lives of all those criminals week. in New York history at your fingertips? Imagine that. Joe, I want to know, and I got to know where I'm going next week. You're not. Not what? I'm going. Oh, this has got to be a mistake. No, it isn't. I figured a friend ought to break the news. Oh, thanks, thanks. Sorry, McCloud. Sorry he doesn't begin to say it. You can't see the chief now. Why not? Well, the city photographer's in there taking a new official picture of him. <laughs> McCloud, you can't. Now, chief Clifford said when you came up here, Bell went like a buffalo with his tail on fire. And those were his exact words. I was to keep you out. Maggie, have you got the sawed-off shotgun underneath that typewriter? Of course not. Then you just tell the chief that you didn't have the ammunition to hold me back. Can't we get on with this? The policeman is your friend. So let's have a big, warm smile, huh? You got a big, warm smile. Chief. There's something wrong here. I knew that, McLeod, the day you walked in from Taos. You know, I've been a good sport about working down in the file room, but... Good sport? And since when is obeying the orders of a superior officer considered being a good sport? Working down in that basement, I might as well be back in Taos. That's what I like about it. I can almost think you are. The duty roster is official. You stay in the file room. Hope he didn't upset you. Upset? Who's upset? I've got another week of peace. Come on, take your picture. <laughs> they break out of the huddle, up to the line of scrimmage. Norton sets him in the off-eye formation. Line Hello? Norton. Chris? This is Sam. What's wrong? Nothing, nothing. I, uh, I'll be over there in a little while. Sounds like I'm in for some police brutality tonight. Yeah, well, I'm anxious to see you, too. I'll be there in a little bit. What's going on? I don't know. What is that stuff down there? What? Are you still seeing that cowboy? Oh, he still moseys over to the old ranch every once in a while. Hi, Marshal. What's a six-letter word for sneak? Uh, coyote? Coyote. Great, it fits. Now, what's a nine-letter word for onomatopoeia, starting with a Y? <laughs> Not gonna touch that as a ten-foot pole. <laughs> oh, your tickets, Marshal. Enjoy the play. You smell something? No. This is the 
operator. We have a fire in the stairwell. We're at the Anderson building. Got her reflecting to the floor. Coughlin, this is the switchboard. I'm calling all the tenants. The building's on fire. Mark! Hey, what's going on? There's a fire. No, there's no need to panic, but just get out quick. And don't use the staircase, because it's spreading fast. Get out of here! Hey, is there any other way to get out of here? No! You're in the way. Now get on the elevator and get out of here. No! I'll get him.
the front and keep it going. How's Chris? Well, yeah, she's not as bad as we first thought. She's got a second degree burn on her left shoulder. What about yourself? All right. I'll feel a lot better when I get both feet into this. Feet into what? You know, Chief, that fire was 
Jumping along that staircase like it had a mind of its own. You suspect arson? <laughs> I'd bet my next month's pay on it. Save your money. I've been all night on this. And the fire department's initial report indicates faulty electric wiring. Oh, really? Did they discover that faulty electrical wiring before or after the fire? McLeod, I know how you feel. I feel the same way. But... Well, then put me on the arson squad. Wouldn't do any good if I did. It's up to the fire department to determine whether or not there was arson. What if they don't? We only investigate after they believe a criminal act has been committed. Well, what if I'm wrong? McLeod, I know what you did last night, and I'm grateful. Well, I appreciate that, Chief, but the important thing is to find out who burned down Chris's building. Well, I've just got a feeling in my bones it was an arsonist. McLeod, I don't care what you feel in your bones, what your intuition tells you, what your instinct senses. Proof is what I care about. Hard proof. Do you understand? Right, I got you. Owen oh, McLeod, try to remember. First, we don't know that it was arson. Second, there is no evidence as yet that points to arson. And third, even when I'm trying to be nice, why do you always drive me up the wall? <laughs> like faulty wiring. That's right. It did and still does. Nothing so far points at anything but an accident. Well, what about the dead janitor I found? Well, that could have been an accident, too. Look, we'll just have to wait for the coroner's report. Well, look, let me just ask you something. If you saw a fire coming out of that duct over there and running along this concrete wall over here, another coming out of this ventilator and one coming down the stairs there, what would you think? You sure that's what you saw? Moving faster than a jackrabbit. I think possibly it would be the work of a paid arsonist. Well, who do you think would hire him? Well, basically, it would rule out vanity and spite, like a jealous husband or someone trying to get even. They usually toss a match to it and run. What about a pyromaniac? Well, it's too spotted, like you said. Most likely it would be for a profit. You mean collect the insurance? Right. Well, who'd be most likely to do that, the owner? Well, usually. Well, what are you going to do about it? Look, I can only report my findings, what I see. I'll tell the insurance company what I believe happened here. And I'll report your suspicions to the uh, police arson squad. And to your captain. What else can I do, huh? There's one more thing that you can do. What? Just hold off on reporting it to the police and take me over to the insurance company and introduce me to the man in charge. That's two. Well, there's always room for one more among friends, isn't there? I certainly appreciate the time that you've given me, Mr. Andrews. Believe me, Marshal, I'd be more than willing to give you the next five years if I thought it would uh, turn up some arsonists. But uh, Mr. Carter doesn't seem to be a likely prospect. Now, he renewed his policy recently, some nine months ago. And at that time, we thoroughly investigated his finances. He's a very wealthy man. This building was relatively new, 1940. To rebuild it cost him much more than the insurance it was covered by. Occupancy was nearly 100%. <laughs> Not a motive in the world that I could see. Well, I guess the fire inspector was right. I'm afraid so. But I appreciate your interest. Arson is our biggest headache. But there's no use being paranoid about every fire, even if there is a strong personal reason. I haven't taken out as much time as I should have. For what? Just look at your face. You're a very busy man. Real busy, too busy. Everybody is. For what's really important. 
What do you know about Jason Carter? The man that owns my building. Mm -hmm. I've never met him. Just, just what Flo's told me. What's that? Oh, he's a regular Horatio Alger. Well, everything he touches turns to money. He has a gorgeous companion. Mm. With his luck, uh, the fire will probably be lucky for him. How's that? Well, it was a rent control building. If he has to rebuild, he can charge any rent he wants. What do you know about this uh, glamorous companion of his? Anything? Well, I know that she has rent control beat by a mile. How's that? He was keeping her. <laughs> well, she's living in the same building with you? She did, but she, she moved out about three or four weeks ago. You know her name? Claire something. I think she's a, a fashion photographer. Maybe I better let you rest. I don't sleep well in my stomach. Does it hurt? No. Just ugly. Probably scar. You know, beauty is more than skin, do you? What do you want me to do? Move back into one of your brand new burnt out flats? Oh, look, I swear to you, things are gonna be different from now on. Come on, baby. No, on. no. What's it all about? It's about us. It's like the old days, huh? Well, I'm back here now. I'm a working girl again. It's nickel and dime stuff. It's not your style. Well, at least it's a lot better than wondering when his lord and master is going to throw me out. Let me try to understand. I had to do that. I couldn't tell you why. But oh. it's all right now. Jason, I've heard that con before. It's not a con. <laughs> Listen, I'm expecting a model any minute. Well, you call me when you're finished. <laughs> Good. Okay. Nice and big, wide. Come on, reach. Reach for that guy. Reach, reach, reach. Come on, yeah. Good, right. Come on, reach, reach. Big, slide over. <laughs> Even this lotion isn't that good. Just a Ms. minute. Harrison? What's your company? I'm with the police. Really? How's she? I like their new uniforms. All right, Liza. I don't mean to be rude, just under a lot of pressure. Your lover is on his way. Can I help you, officer? Tell me about Jason Carter. Now, would that be nice? Kiss and tell. What's it about? His building had burned down. Yeah, he told me about that. When? Restless, Liza. A little while ago. Are you sure? Of course. He just had the fire. When else could he have told me? Three weeks ago, before it burned down. This meeting has suddenly stopped being friendly. Is that why you moved out to protect yourself? No, for one reason. The rent got too high. He wanted me to pay it. You have a fight? No, he just couldn't afford me. Not my rent, my charge accounts, or my whims. Hmm. Is he busted? To pieces. At least he was. Was? Does that surprise you? Well, yeah, you know, he has a reputation of being a very wealthy man. Claire Harrison. Just a second. Thank you. After you finish your phone call, go investigate someplace else. I have work to do. No more questions and answers. 
McLeod here. This is Frank Colton from the fire department arson squad. I've got to see you right away. Where? After I talked to you at the building, I checked through all the torches I thought could possibly upset it if it was arson. There's not too many around who could have pulled it off that expert. That's a great legacy. Yeah! Stan Barry? Uh, yeah, who is that? Please. What's it about? Open the door! Uh, just a minute! I don't even know if it's within my purview to do what you ask. Mr. Andrews, it's our only chance. All I'm asking is that you let me look through the files of Jason Carter. I might stumble onto something that you missed. If he ever found out, he could sue us for a fortune. Well, he's the only one that's got a motive, and I know that Jason Carter's our man. Well, whatever proof you're looking for, you won't find it in the files, believe me. Mr. Andrews, there's just got to be some way of proving that it's him. There's got to be. Well, maybe there is. What? Nah, it wouldn't work. It's not admissible evidence. Well, I don't need admissible court evidence. All I need is enough to convince my chief that, that, that I'm not yelling down a dry well. What is it? Voice stress analysis. Voice stress analysis? Yeah, yeah. You can listen to answers to somebody's questions and tell if he's telling the truth or not. It's actually quite simple. Well, it might be simple, but how are you going to get him to submit to questioning? He doesn't know what's happening. How's that? Now, look, Marshal, uh... From here on in, whatever we say between us, that's strictly off the record. That's right. Now, remember, neither this company nor myself must be implicated. Mr. Andrews, you've got my word on it. Now, how does it work? Everything all right with us? Uh, not precisely. I've been working out a puzzle. I don't like games. Not games. Life and death. What are you talking about? A puzzle, darling. You see, a man is broke. He's got this building that he's losing his shirt on. But it does happen to be a choice piece of land. Well, suddenly the building burns down. He's not broke anymore. As a matter of fact, he's rich. Now, everybody thought he was rich before that, but he wasn't. There's 
this girl who knows that and knows a lot more. Blackmail? Arson. That microphone and this recorder are the entire apparatus. Now, just have him say a few things to set his norm and then ask him the questions in the insurance folder. You know what's going to happen to the both of us? If you're wrong about this and Chief Clifford finds out... Joe, all you have to do is do it like we rehearsed it and you're home free. McLeod, I just wish I was home, period. Mr. Broadhurst, am I under some kind of suspicion? Uh, no, sir, not by me. Just routine. Well, Mr. Andrews at the insurance company said they were sending a man over. You always move this quickly? Well, it's hard for me to say, sir. I, I'm new to this sort of thing. Well, they wouldn't send an inexperienced man if it was anything important, would they? You have a point, sir. All right. Ask away. Okay, first, Mr. Carter. Did you set fire to your building? Did I what? Well, take it easy. This isn't an accusation. It's a form. We ask these questions before paying off any claim. Well, what good are they? I'm not under oath, am I? Well, it has nothing to do with legality, sir. I just need it for our files. All right, go ahead. Sir, did you set the fire? No, I did not set the fire. Did you hire someone else to set the fire? No, I did not hire someone else to set fire to my building. Do you have any idea who might want to see the building destroyed? No. I know of no one who would want to see my building destroyed. Are you in great need of the insurance money you will receive? Yes, of course I am. I need it to rebuild. Okay, hold it. What's, uh, what's supposed to happen now? Well, from the waves recorded on this psychological stress evaluator, we can tell if the man is lying or not. Like a polygraph. Huh? Yeah, essentially, voice stress works like a lie detector. But instead of blood pressure, we use tonal stress change. We feel it is accurate in more than 95% of the cases. Hmm. All right. Let's see it work. Well, it has nothing to do with uh, legality, sir. That is true. I'll say. I need this for my files. Lie. All right, go ahead. Sir, did you set fire to your building? No, I did not set fire to the building. Lie. Did you hire someone else to set the fire? No, I did not hire anyone to set fire to it. Lie. Do you have any idea who might want to see the building destroyed? I have no idea who would want to see the building destroyed. Lie. Are you in great need of the insurance money you will receive? Of course I am. I need it to rebuild. True. The answer is still no, McLeod. Why? I mean, just tell me why. You said yourself that you wanted hard facts. McLeod, not one word on that tape is admissible evidence. Well, I know that. Not in court it isn't, but at least we know now that it wasn't an accident, that it was arson, and it was murder. And that makes it a police case. Maybe, but a lousy one. I need something more. Like a witness? Well, I might be getting one. Who? Carter's ex-girlfriend. She knows all about him, and they're not too friendly. You can't develop a case on a lover's whim. Well, here's another thing. The coroner's report on that janitor that was killed. Death attributed to cranial damage. So? Could have been struck by a falling timber. Chief, I was the first one to see that janitor. He was laying there on the stairway. There wasn't a timber within 20 feet of him. And besides that, there was no smoke inhalation in the lungs, which means that he was dead before the fire. All right, I'll get Carter in here. I won't get the truth out of him. Uh, no, uh, Chief, I wouldn't do that. And why not? Well, suppose we get him in and he admits it, which I doubt. What have we got? We got one man. What we want is the big guy, the one that Carter goes to, the one that controls the torches. Well, McLeod, you have a point. No, I take that back. Uh, uh, you, you can't. Uh, uh, Chief, listen to me. If you get Carter... McLeod, you listen to me. You're not assigned to arson. They're top men, veterans. They can conduct an investigation without your help. I couldn't agree with you more, believe me. I couldn't agree with you more. 
As a matter of fact, I don't even think they should know what I'm doing. There's no telling how deep this thing goes. Am I going to see you this afternoon? Well, I don't know. Why not? Got a few things to check out. I don't know when we'll be finished. Vagueness doesn't become you, Sam. What is it? You know, all you got to worry about is just getting yourself well. The fire? Dr. Merson, radio. I wondered why you wanted to know everything about Dr. Jason Mercy, Carter. Radio. You think he set the fire. Now, don't jump to conclusions. Now, that's it, isn't it? Jason Carter. It's a possibility. He killed Mark for money. Don't get yourself upset, uh, Chris. Upset? Yes. Outpatient desk, please. Nurse I'm going to work on this one with you, sir. Chris, all you're going to do is work on getting well. I want to nail Carter. It was my nephew. Chris, there's nothing that you can do. Don't believe tell me. me there's nothing I can do. All right, I mean all right. it. Okay. I'll see what I can do. Okay? Thank you. Hey. my special assignment here in New York. That's what I'm calling you about. I need your help. What in the world can I do? Well, I'd like to use your name. I want to impersonate you. You want to impersonate me? Yeah, I got a pose of somebody that's very rich. Well, I'm not that rich. You mean you'd have trouble checking out at the bank? Oh, I'd check out very well. Then you wouldn't mind. Well, frankly, McLeod, I'd feel flattered. Is it a big case you're on? Yeah, it's arson. Oh, Jake, one other thing. Would you have your banker tell him how wild and colorful you are? Colorful? Wow. There you go. <laughs> Mr. Boris, I tried to tell you on the phone I'm a very busy man. <laughs> Aren't we all? Like I said, you know, you give us five, ten minutes together, no telling where we'll end up. Oh. Hey, this is nice. Very nice. Yeah, that's, that's really beautiful. Well, there's no question about it. You're the man that I want. For what? Well, I'm going to speak very frankly. I need a little advice, Mr. Carter. I got a building here in New York that's uh, it's costing me a bundle in taxes. So? <laughs> well, if it were soybeans or sorghum or oats, cotton, well, we'd be talking about something else. You see, that's my line, and I'm the best. But this is real estate, and that's your line. They tell me that you're the best. The best always have two problems being expensive and busy. Well, I don't think that you have to worry about that. I'll come up with any ante that I got to. Doesn't solve my other problem, time. You know, Mr. Carter, I found out that if you can just solve that first problem, money, all the other little problems kind of fall into place naturally. Yes. Just a minute. It's for you, long distance. Hmm. Jake Porter. Mr. Porter. This is your number one assistant. Oh, great, great. Well, of course I want to pick up the option. Man, be crazy not to pick it up now. Uh, just a minute, please. Mr. Carter, you got to come down to Albuquerque with me. I got a what? There's a sorghum field down there. It's about to become a housing project. Congratulations, but I think I'll have to pass. Don't say I didn't tell you. What is that fellow's name that, uh... Out in Los Angeles, you keep raving about. You're the only man I've ever raved about. And I'll call you back in three minutes as planned. Oh, yeah, Perkins, that's the fella, right. Would you get him on the horn and offer it to him? Yeah? Well, what'd he say? <laughs> $10,000 just to come down and look at it? <laughs> well, I think maybe we ought to... We ought to pay it. A man that's got that kind of gall, he's got to be worth something. Yeah. But no more than 75000 for the survey, right? No, 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 I'll be back. I'll be back uh, no later than Monday. And quit tracking me down with the telephone. You do things in high style, Mr. Porter. 
Well, I just feel bad that you won't be in on this one, too. I'm not in on the other one. You know, Mr. Carter, I plan to go from the pavement right up to a record. I want the tallest building in these parts, and I want the best with me. <laughs> Mr. Porter, as you must know, an architectural firm like mine gets up to 10% of the total cost of the building. Hey, you're sitting on eight, nine million dollars. Yes, possibly. But from long experience, sitting doesn't necessarily guarantee hatching. Yeah, well, I'm willing to gamble 75,000 that this nest gets hatched. I'm not. I have too much to do as it is. Yes. Long distance again. Sorry. Jake Porter. At the tone it will be. Well, just who are you working for? Me or the architect? Well, your plans are much more interesting. Yeah, all right, all right. Well, I've got to have him for the survey. OK, $100,000. Pay it. No, I know it. I know it. They're expecting me in a half hour. I haven't forgotten it. Thank you. I'll make you the same offer, Mr. Carter, $100,000. Well, I'm afraid I'll still have to pass. I tell you, you're a hard nut to crack. You know, I got to run. Say, would you do me a big favor? I got to be back home by Monday, and my time is just tighter than a noose at a hanging. I'm having a few people over at my place to Central Hotel tonight at 9 o'clock. I wonder, would you mind just dropping by for a quick drink? I could talk a little bit more about the survey I want, maybe get a chance to twist your arm? Well, I'm sorry, maybe some other time. You might change your mind. I doubt it. Good day, Mr. Porter. Central Hotel, 9 o'clock. Oui. On pourra parler plus longtemps quand j'arriverai à Sainte-Claire. D'accord, mon vieux. Jusqu'au 17. Et mais mon bon souvenir à ta femme. Au revoir. Now, don't tell me you're already here with the money you owe me. Well, it won't be long. Fire went off perfectly. I know. Now all we have to do is wait until the insurance pays off. Lloyd, I was going to ask you a favor. Small margin? No, no, no. I have an opportunity to buy the building next to mine. It's a small lot, but with it, I think I can triple the size of the condominiums I intend to build, and it only takes 100000 for the option. And you want me to forward it to you and collect it with the rest of the money you owe me when the insurance comes in? Well, I may not even need it. The insurance company said they'd off the claim right away, but... Uh, can't take any chances. I don't want to lose the parcel. You have a fatal flaw, Carter. Greed. No, not greed, Floyd. I, uh, I have a high standard of living. Well, I don't intend to finance it any more than I already have. Let's get the farm money, and we'll take things from there. You see, you don't seem to understand. Without that parcel, my property isn't worth half as much. Carter, I'm not your father. I was your broker. You got in over your head, I helped bail you out, but I don't intend to become your private money lender. Miss Henry, continue with my calls, please. About the money you owe me. You understand interest is accruing on it until it gets paid. Yes? Are you the one who called? Where is she? <laughs> You can't pay off Carter's insurance. You've got to hold back on his check. He's broke. He needs the money. And now he's going to need me. you got to. Marshal, according to you, I had to show you Mr. Carter's account. I had to tell you about voice stress analysis. I had to involve my own staff and equipment in its operation. I had to bend over backward and do a somersault and breaking just about every rule that I stand by and what this company's ethics is based upon. And each time, it was the only way. Now, Mr. Carter has that insurance check coming to him, and I won't hold up its payment. I have no legal basis for it. I hope, I mean, I pray I've made myself clear. Miss Andrews, I appreciate your position. I understand that you have to do what you feel is best. Well, I've got to do what I feel is best. Well, what do you mean? 
What, what, what are you going to do? I may have to ride this thing clear to the Supreme Court, but I'm going to find out just how much water that voice stress analysis holds. No, you can't. That would involve me. The company, everyone connected with us. Well, what do you think that arson does? You gave me your word. Well, what do you want me to do? Just back away from it? Just open up the trap and let him go free after he's caused the death of that young boy and all the rest of the suffering? Huh? And now he's caused another death. You gave me your word. All right! You still got it. If you can live with it in your conscience, I guess I'll be able to do the same thing. Have you any idea how thin the ice is? Well, let's skate or sink. At least we'll be able to say to ourselves, we gave it our best shot. All right, two weeks, but that's the maximum. I can't hold up the money any longer. Get me Jason Carter. Oh, there's one other thing. What? Just don't tell Mr. Carter when he's going to get the money. Mr. Andrews, I was told that my check was in the process of being written. Uh, that's true, it is. But uh, we won't be able to disperse it at the present. Well, could I get part of the money now? I mean, that would be very helpful to me. No, I'm sorry. That's impossible. Impossible? Look, I was promised the money this week. Uh, I know you were. Uh, you shouldn't have been. That's why I'm calling you personally. Tell me, Mr. Andrews, exactly what is wrong with my claim. Why are you holding up payment? No, I'm not holding it up. It's just that with a fire this size, with a claim as large as yours, it's necessary for the claim to be reviewed by our board. A board? Yeah, but believe me, it's just a formality. Well, how long is this routine going to take? Well, every case is different. It's hard to say. But believe me, I'm doing everything in my power to expedite your claim. Well, I hope you can handle it soon. So do I. Goodbye. Joan, get me Mr. Butler. Yes, sir. Mr. Butler. How are you, Carter? I'm fine. Never felt better. Are we still on for tomorrow? Well, as a matter of fact, that's why I'm calling. Uh, something important just popped up that I have to take care of. I thought buying my property had a measure of importance to you. Measure? Are you kidding? No, your lot next door is the key to my plans. No, look, um, what I thought I'd like to do is give you a call, say, in a couple of days, and then we can get together and uh, lock it all up. This isn't a song and dance, is it, Mr. Carter? No, no, no. Believe me, I'm not stalling. It's just that uh, I have to take care of this other thing first. Good enough. I'll wait on your call. Two days. Right. Good man. Joan, I want a full financial report on Jake Porter, Albuquerque, New Mexico. It's confidential in Russia. Right away, sir. <laughs> I hear about you checking out. Come to take me home? The only place you're going is right back in bed. Sam, I told you I'm going to help you get Carter. That's a good way of winding up in the morgue. Morgue? Yeah, that's what happened to Claire, the photographer you told me about. Was she murdered? Chris, we found her face down in a vat of developing solution. I wouldn't tell you this, but I just want you to know the kind of people that we're dealing with. Chris? I'm not going to let you do it. It's too dangerous. Sam, from the bottom of my heart, I love your concern, but believe me, nobody could stop me. Not even you. begin. We're supposed to be there at 8.30. I told Carter to show up at 9. Remember what I told you, Broadhurst. I want a strict accounting of this down to the last ounce. All right, Chief. McLeod? Yeah. McLeod? Yeah. Is the department paying for that? It's just a rental. You playing bartender? What's your poison? All right, let's see how sharp you are. Make me a daiquiri. Uh, daiquiri. I'm not sure what goes in it. Bull shot, then. I never heard him swear before. I wasn't swearing. That's a drink. I 
certainly hope the rest of your operation is better prepared than he is. McLeod, what makes you think he's going to show? Money. Uh-uh, nothing gets touched, unless it's an official party, Chief's orders. Personally, I don't think your pigeon's going to show, which means that Chief Clifford's going to be in great voice tomorrow morning. I'm glad I'm not in your I, shoes. You know, Joe, the important thing is that you care. Huh? Yo. You bet. Send him right up. We're in business. You. For once in your life, why don't you listen to me? If I listened to everybody that gave me advice, Connie, you know what I'd be doing? I'd be pushing a plow through a turnip patch. All I can say is I've got to do what I got to do. And all you have to do is just put it down in Latin and make it legal. Now, I've been doing nothing for the past few months except look at plans by the best architects in the world. Well, I looked at his plans are fine. Carter's plans are fine. Fine? You don't want just any building. You want an edifice. You want a UN. You want a, a Rockefeller Plaza, Lincoln Center. You've always been screaming for class. Now let's get it. Connie, why are you always right? Why do you always bore through like a, like a bull weevil right to the heart of everything? Mr. Porter. Hey, you made it. Yes, I did. Look, if you're busy, I can I have a drink. No, 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 no. That's, that's all right. No, not busy at all. I'd like to introduce you to Connie Franklin. This is Jason Carter. This is my legal counsel here. Oh, I mean, yeah. she's the chief cook and bottle washer. When she says jump, I just say, how oh, high, baby. <laughs> it's a telephone call for you, long distance. Ah, uh, who is it? I didn't ask. Well, I, I, I want to talk. <laughs> I'll check, sir. Uh, yeah, no, that's all right. It's all right. <laughs> Excuse me. I have to confess, I uh, couldn't help overhearing. Well, in case I wasn't clear, I voted against you. Hmm. That was before you knew me. <laughs> <laughs> but not before I know your work. No, frankly, I think that Hope and Hope are better architects for what Jake has in mind. Why am I here? Jake likes you. Jake's rather um, flamboyant, isn't he? <laughs> Jake's Jake. That doesn't tell me very much. What do you want to know? Well, you probably wouldn't tell me anything really confidential about him anyway, would you? Confidential? <laughs> now, Jake's never had a secret in his life. He enjoys talking about himself and his money too much. What about you? Me? You have any secrets? Well, only one that you'd be interested in. I just wrote a check for $100,000 to Hope and Hope for the survey. But you haven't sent it? I haven't torn it up yet. Well, let's uh, see what we can do about changing your mind. They say the way to a lady's heart's through a, a waltz. <laughs> no, I hate dancing. Why don't we just stay right here? Listen, I've got a better idea. Why don't we go downstairs to the bar and get out of here all together? Okay. You're a fascinating woman, Connie. As fascinating as the building that Jake wants built. Oh, can't you take a compliment? You're too beautiful to be insecure. <laughs> it's like being too rich to want more money. All right, I admit it. I want that building. It's a challenge. I'll tell you something else. So are you. I'm siding away from the building. Must be nice to be able to handle two challenges the same way, like two birds with one stick. 
Well, none of the bruises show. Bruises? All well, the hard knocks you must have had to make you so cynical. <laughs> You're confusing cynicism with reality. You're confusing business with romance. Same two birds. Well, not in this case. But I'll have to tell you that I'm pretty good. At which? Business or romance? Architecture. <laughs> You'll have to tell me how I'm doing at the romance. You're too charming to be insecure. Hey, shall I take that as encouragement? I would. Hey, look around for another bottle of scotch somewhere, will you? Hey, Joe, I'm working on a million dollar arson case. Can't you take care of the little stuff? Yeah, I always get the little stuff, huh? Like the 18 bucks out of my pocket for everything missing from inventory? Hey, how'd it go? Well, no matter what we talked about, somehow the conversation always got back to the $100,000 advance. Well, you did let him talk you out of hope and hope, didn't you? Alas, I succumbed. He's gonna look at the building tomorrow afternoon. Hey, that's great. It mm -hmm. worked. Yeah, it did. What's bothering you, McCoy? Next step. What step? Got to find a building for him to look at. You need a what? We've got Jason Carter believing that Sam's interested in getting advice on a building. That's right. We? He's infected you, too? Chief, surely this town has got an old building someplace that I can use. Old? Why don't we just put something up for you? I hate to see you use just any old building. I'm sure that Sam is on the right track. I was, I was just talking it over with my uncle. Your uncle? The commissioner. And he thought it was a wonderful idea. All right, he... all right, all right! Clifford. Yeah, he's here. Jake Porter, Albuquerque. What's happening, Jake? I got the call from Carter's people. Everything go all right? With a wild and colorful guy like me, how could it miss? No way. Well, they're thorough. My bank was contacted. So was my stockbroker and my ex-wife. Were you covered with her? No, but it didn't matter. When they heard the size of the alimony check, I guess they figured I owned Albuquerque. Listen, Jake, I just can't thank you enough. Well, forget it. I haven't had so much fun since I was a kid. <laughs> there you go. Carter is sold. Well, I'm not. Chief, with the progress that we're making, we can't stop now. I'm sure Sam's on the right track. Why, when I was talking to my uncle... Mm, the commissioner. Go. We got it. You mean the chief actually got you a building? Everything's scheduled for tomorrow. Excuse us, Joe. What's the matter, Sam? Chris, I want to talk to you. Now, Chris, I want you to listen to me very carefully. I know how you feel about Carter, and I know that you want him to pay for what he's done. But the best thing that you can do now is just to step back and let step the police... Step back? Now? Yeah. But you wouldn't have gotten this far without me. Chris. What about tomorrow? You need me there. It's all arranged. I want a policewoman. I don't believe it. Chris... We know that Carter is capable of murder. Now, what do you think he's going to do when he finds out who we are? I want a trained police officer. You're going to get a trained reporter who's getting madder by the second. And who's going to... Another minute. I'm in. That's final. 
Period, exclamation point. Underlined. Why don't we start digging? Jake, you don't have the money for it. <laughs> I got the money. No, you don't have the money for it. I've got the money. You got it in land and places like this, but no cash. Honey, I'll get the money. You already did for the Albuquerque project. It's gone. You mean to tell me I don't have a lousy $100,000 to give Mr. Carter here? I mean to tell you. I thought you wrote a $100,000 check to Hope and Hope. That was before the other project came through. Well, why didn't you tell me this morning? Why do you wait till now? Get the man out here and waste his time. Mr. Carter, what can I tell you? I'm embarrassed. Well, uh, Mr. Porter, I'd like in on this project, but I kind of need my money now. Well, I want you in on it. You're my man, believe me. I may have to cool this thing for a month or so, but that cash flow problem will work itself out. Well, maybe there's a way that I can uh, save you a month or two. Right, Mr. Butler. Look, how about in my office day after tomorrow, about 11? That'll be fine. Did you clear up that other matter? Oh, yeah, it couldn't have worked out better. Uh, look, could you bring that survey on your lot along? Will do. Right. Well, Carter, about your story, huh? That's right. Oh, that's that. No, 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 not quite. Why not? Well, it's like we said. There's no sense in knocking off the bottom and leaving the top untouched. He committed arson, he is the top. No, no, no. Somebody had to do it for him. That means a professional arsonist. Now, somebody had to hire the professional arsonist for Carter. And that means that my suspicions of a full arson ring is true. All right, what's the bottom line? Well, you know that old building you let me use? No frills, McLeod, no sales job. What do you want to do with it? Burn it down. Respond, high-rise apartment, 54th and 2nd Avenue for a fire. Let me get this straight, Marshal. A city-owned warehouse is going to be set on fire tonight. That's right, Captain. And the arsonist involved thinks you own the building. Right. And you want us to be there to put the fire out shortly after it starts. Well, not exactly. I mean, I figured that you and your fellas could come in a little bit later. And allow it to burn out of control? No, you don't have to let it burn out of control just as long as it burns to the ground. Burn to the ground? Sorry, can't. Uh, Captain! Captain! Captain, you gotta go along with me. We might have a chance to knock off the top arson ring in the country. But there are high rises in that neighborhood, McLeod. What if the fire spreads? Well, I figure you and your boys would be in there by that time. Look, I'll go with you on one condition. Name it. I've got to be there every step of the way. You got it! All right. Thank you. Bless me for looking around an empty building. What do we have here? Oh, oh, oh. Now, this is going to be a cinch. No problem in court, McLean. No, especially with the captain here to testify. Perfect. You know, you just made me lieutenant, Pigeon. What are you talking about? I just solved the last 10 arsons in my district. I didn't do them. Besides a couple of homicides. Hey, hold it. I never killed anybody. You can't pin that on me. You're pinned, you're trust, and you're ready for the oven, Pigeon. <laughs> Mike, give me a break. There gotta be something I can do for you. Ten unsolved arsons on his record isn't doing him any good, and he's the kind of guy who likes to do good. What's gonna happen to you? You'll be booked as the ringleader of the arson gang. Probably every precinct in town will lay their unsolved arsons on you. Listen, this is nuts. I'm no ringleader. I don't even know who owns this joint. I never do. Look. You tell me who sent you here. Who's your boss? Huh? Who sent you? Who's a boss? Kill me, man. Pigeon, you're just as good as dead anyway. You're looking at life in prison. How does that stack up to you against two to 15 for attempted arson? Huh? Who's a boss? 
Well, I don't give a damn if you tell me or not. Because one way or the other, my book's going to be cleared. Do you understand? Hey, wait a minute, man. What happens to me if I do tell you? You stand trial just like any other arsonist, but I'll be there to tell the judge that you cooperated. Now, who is he? All right. Foreman, Wally Foreman. Operates out of this paint store on 9th and 63rd. What's the money? 25000 Where do you collect it? Foreman's place, tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock. Get him out of here, Joe. Well, Captain, might as well get started. No, 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 no. Easy. Take it easy. That's right. I agreed to burn the building down, not us. $25,000? It's a paint store, not a bank. Yeah, now look, fella, you mean you're not going to pay? Who are you? Ronnie Springer. It means nothing to me. You mean Carrie didn't tell you? Who's Carrie? He's a friend of mine. I just visited in town and looked him up. So? Well, he broke his leg last night. I lit the warehouse for him. Where is he? He's a Bellevue. Let me have the number for Bellevue Hospital. Dr. Broadhurst? What? Well, yes, I'm with him right now. I think that would be all right, sir. For a minute. Hello? How you doing? I was expecting to hear from you. Now, give me some stuff for the pain. I just woke up a minute ago. I got a friend of yours here, Springer. Yeah, Lonnie? Yeah, he, uh, he pinch hit for me last night. Should call me first. It wasn't time. Hey, don't worry about it. He's the best. Burned down half of Texas, New Mexico. How long are you going to be in town? Till I leave. Well, maybe I'll need somebody, Springer. How can I reach you? Hey, wait a minute now. <laughs> hey, Foreman, I just did this as a favor for a friend, you know what I mean? The job's not big enough. This one could be. Well, why don't you have your man call me? Through Carrie. What man? Foreman, I don't work second hand. Now, what makes you think I don't run my own show? Hey, look. You know who I am, right? Well, I know who you are. Mr. Richards. You want a hundred shares? Quarter under? You're in. Thanks. Now, what's your problem? Your tool and die plant. What about it? Carrie, he's out. Why? He had an accident yesterday, broke his leg. Who took care of last night? Friendly Carrie's. He looks to be a terrific man. What do you know about him? He works in Southwest, Texas, New Mexico mostly. He's a real pro. That warehouse job was one sweet one. If Carrie's out, we're gonna need a pro. What's the new man's name? Springer. Lonnie Springer. It's Henry. Get me Rice Hutchins in Dallas. Here's to the new partnership. By the time you rebuild on your burnt out lot in Jake's, you'll be known as the condominium king. <laughs> I hope so. I'll drink to that. Excuse me. Yes? Lonnie Springer there? Ah, just a second. It's for you. I think you want to take it privately. Well, where is she? <laughs> Find out for yourself. You. There's Wally Foreman. I got your number from Carrie. So? Now, why don't you come on by here at three? What for? The big one we were talking about. Bueno. You move fast. Mm-hmm. 
Is that a complaint? I'll complain some more when I see you this evening. Mm -hmm. Tell my partner. I'll see him later. I should have never let you get into this. Just get him, Sam. Not until I meet the man. Don't. And I'm out. Now, look, take it easy. Don't tell me to take it easy. Look, I tried. But he calls the shots. He'll only do business his way. And his way pays a hundred grand, Springer. What's the job? Tool and dye plant. 75,000 square feet of factory. Where? Well, you'll find out when the time comes. 75,000 square feet, huh? Well, I'm gonna have to round up some supplies. I'll get everything you need. You make this the classiest job you ever pulled. Look, Foreman, they're all the same to me. Not to us. This is our swan song. A tool and die plant? That's right. That's all you got out of it? Well, I tried to get more. He closed up tighter than a drum. Any idea how many of those plants there are in the metropolitan area? Probably two dozen. Go out a radius of 30 miles, there are probably 100. And what's this swan song business? Well, it has to be his own place. A factory like that's got to be worth millions. Yeah, well, uh, Edwards comes out at midnight. Brothers, call you back. Get a fix on every tool and die plant over 75,000 square feet. What zone, Chief? Within a 100-mile radius. Whatever you're doing, Betty, drop it. I want you to contact all fire stations here and in New Jersey. Get their high-risk factories, especially tool and die. Right, Chief. Carson, I want you to contact all major insurance carriers. Have their computers locate every tool and die plant they carry within 100 miles of here. Stay on top of this, Broadhurst. Put all the information together. I want each spot pinpointed on a map. Right, Chief. Still only two guards? And they both cover the main gate. You heard from the insurance? No problem. It's just a matter of time. My place and our clients. And Torch did a perfect job. Better tell him to get set. Central Hotel. Room 1418. Who'd you say you were calling? The torch, Lonnie Springer. You gotta have the wrong room. Springer? Yeah, yeah, this is Wally Foreman. Have you got more information on the job yet? You can get set. Uh, look, somebody just came in. I'll call you right back. What's all this about, Carter? I recognize that voice. It's the same room. That's Jake Porter. That's the man whose warehouse you took care of last Tuesday. Porter, his name is Springer. He's the one who lit it. Ah, you're crazy. He's a top flame. I checked him out. So did I, and he's a multimillionaire. A cop. He's gotta be a cop. We've been set up. All right, what do we do? Do, as we planned. What about Springer? As we planned. Only be very careful not to be tailed. If he's a cop, so is his lawyer. They're the only two people who can finger anyone. Whatever they say can't be corroborated if they don't appear. Single. Can't take any chances. Too much at stake. The man said... Oh, the said... man, the man. I'm tired of hearing what the man said. I don't bow down to anybody. I don't exactly call a hundred grand bowing down. Hey. 
And we've circled possible locations where we think the fire can take place. This is an open line that McLeod will use if he can. Brothers. Oh, Chris. No, nothing new at all. Sure. Chris Coughlin, Chief, she wants to talk to you. Hello, Chris. Oh, I'm sorry, there's nothing I can tell you either. He's totally on his own, then? Nothing we can do about it. Well, couldn't you put a tail on him or something? Well, no, it's too risky. So far, they've played it cool and smart. If they spotted a tail, it could blow the whole show. But I'll call you as soon as I hear something. Thanks. Aren't you a little premature? I mean, our date isn't for two hours. I know. I just had a phone call from Jake. Jake? And he told me to bring you to him. Uh, well, why didn't he call me himself? Well, I don't know, but he said to tell you it was important and that we should both meet him as soon as we could. I don't know. I... Well, I mean, tell him you wouldn't come. Or... Well, uh, are you going to see him now? He said right away. All right. Let's hope whatever it is, it uh, doesn't interfere with our date. It's certainly a great pleasure to watch a top pro at work. So, you're the legendary Lonnie Springer. I was told that you didn't show your face to us workers. In this case, I couldn't resist. Mr. Springer, or whatever your name is. And hey, what do you mean by that? That we're not as stupid as you might have imagined. I say you were stupid? I never said you were stupid. You're fairly convincing for a cop. <laughs> so what are you going to do? What we all came here to do, set fire to my building. If they can identify what is left of you, it will go down as an accident to an overzealous officer. Everything's still going to point to you. Circumstantial. Spencer, the ringleader that you and your associate have been looking for so hard. Floyd Spencer of the stock brokerage house. I'm flattered that you heard about me. So that's the setup. You know everything about your investors. You know who's in good shape. You know who's going down the tubes. Exactly. What kind of an advisor would I be if I couldn't get some of them out of a tight spot once in a while? Like Jason Carter. Sam! Sam! Everything 
set? One match right there, and up she goes. How long will it take? This place will be ashes inside of 20 minutes. Then let's not lose any more time. Why did you do that? Generals have lieutenants, so the trail will never lead back to them. And since this is my last fling, so to speak, I think it best. Don't you? Give me a hand. Threat. You have too much to lose to incriminate yourself. I'll go and lay down that fuse. Complete. The two officers caught the arsonist, and in their desperate struggle, they were consumed in the flames. Hotel. Yes, operator. Give me Jake Porter's suite. Sorry, there's no answer in Mr. Porter's suite. But there has to be. Uh, no, tell me, has Connie Franklin left? There's no message here telling us that she has. Thank you, operator. Carson, get over to the Central Hotel right away. See if you can find Chris Coughlin. Oh, remember, she's going by the name Connie Franklin. Make it fast. What happened to her? I don't know. Doesn't answer the phone. Could she have followed McLeod? No, she didn't know where he went. She's supposed to be waiting to hear from me. Sweet again. Then check with every page, bellhop, cab driver, and anyone else you can think of. She has to be somewhere. Engine Company 26, respond to a warehouse fire on 23rd and 1st Avenue. Engine Company 28, respond to a warehouse fire on 23rd and 1st Avenue. Engine Company 28. Respond to a warehouse fire, 23rd and 1st Avenue. Car 32, check with dispatcher. Rutgers. Where? Right. There it is. All right, let's go.
Mr. Spencer, we just got a phone call. Your tool and die plant is on fire. You sure? Yes, the entire factory's burning down. I'll go with you. Gentlemen, excuse me. Oh. 